The film which you are about to see is the account of the gruesome attack that befell a group of men in Africa. Best friends Alan Robertson, Gary Brown, and Richie Goody were all American subcontractors who were working on the American Embassy near the thick rainforest in Sierra Leone. In working long days and late nights to ensure the completion of the building, the men were pretty tired but were happy that a day off was close by. Well, on the day of April 23rd, 2006, the three were greeted with the opportunity of a lifetime. For you see, their dear friend and guide, Melvin Mama, had come by and gave the three the chance of to come to the Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary located right here near the coast. And with absolutely no hesitation, the four held a taxi and took off. Though, as they were driving along and enjoying the jungle views as they whizzed by, nothing would prepare the friends for what was actually happening inside the sanctuary at the exact same moment. You see, for the past few months, the chimpanzees have been watching the volunteers as they lock and unlock the main gate. More specifically, they were watching exactly how this objective was exactly done, and now, unfortunately for our friends and everyone else who happened to be at the sanctuary that day, 31 chimpanzees managed to unlock the main gate and have escaped free into the closed off parts of the reserve. But not only this, but they were also raving mad over every injustice that had been enacted on them by the humans that surrounded them, and somehow were ready to enact their own type of revenge. Then, a little later, as the friends were driving up the small road that leads up to the reserve, they were suddenly surprised by one of the larger chimps that jumped down in front of their car. Not just any ordinary chimp, though. They just had the unfortunate luck of landing in front of the troops' alpha male, a hulking 270-pound, almost six-foot beast by the name of Bruno. Then, thinking that this was just a normal interaction with an actual gorilla because of the mere size of Bruno, Alan, Gary, and Richie then started to race and get their cameras to capture the moment. Fortunately for the group though, Melvin and a cab driver, a man by the name of Isa Kanu, were both locals and both immediately knew if something was wrong and began to quickly put the car in reverse as quickly as possible. Though as soon as they did so, Bruno immediately burst into a fit of unbridled rage and almost as if possessed by a demon, began to chase after the taxi with unrivaled quickness and in less than a few seconds had already overtaken the reversing car. Then as Bruno was running alongside, he suddenly reached out and tore off the driver's small side window. Then with incredible blinding speed, Bruno blasted through the rear driver's side window, and just as quickly as it occurred, he began tearing into Melvin with a blinding, screaming, biting, and scratching rage as if it was somehow now personal. Then immediately upon seeing this, Issa, the cab driver, put the car back in drive and hit the accelerator, which immediately made the car screech to a halt as it changed gears, which fortunately at the same time caused Bruno to fall back out of the window. Unfortunately though, as he was still holding on to Melvin when he fell, they both went careening out of the car. Luckily though, his friends caught him at the last minute before he completely fell out. Then as Gary, Alan, and Richie began to try pull back Melvin into the car, they peered out to see if Bruno was still there. And not only was he still on the side of the car, but he now managed to somehow fit the better half of Melvin's hand into his mouth. Which luckily he somehow managed to fight it loose, but not without losing half his palm and three fingers in the process. Gary then quickly ripped off his shirt and began wrapping it around his friend's hand. And fortunately for the group, they were finally able to lose Bruno in the process, though this would eventually be only short-lived. Then as they got closer to the sanctuary, they noticed that the gates were slowly closing. And thinking that the danger was on the outside of the preserve, Issa believed that they had no other choice but to ram the gate, if they actually had any chance of making it. At the same time, the other men in the car yelling and pleading with Issa to stop and not ram the car. But just as fast as they could get a word out, the car had already violently collided with the gate, simultaneously knocking some of the men out in the process. Then as the car rolled to a stop and the men were disoriented and just beginning to get their bearings back, it finally became apparent as to what was going on as they saw Bruno and the entire chimpanzee tribe slowly surrounding the car. As everyone finally woke up, panic began to finally set in as Alan, Richie, Asa, and Melvin all started running back to the gate as quickly as possible. 
Then still in the car and just now coming to, Gary can hear screaming coming from the outside as he looks over and sees everyone but Melvin had made it outside the gates. And not only this, but he also hears and sees Melvin crying for help as Bruno was now standing over him, ready to maul him once again. Upon seeing this though, Gary immediately began to feel rage and almost immediately without control begins yelling back at Bruno to get off his friend. Being the alpha male though, Bruno took this as a personal challenge and with a howling war cry quickly charged him down. Gary was ready though as he had the foresight to grab a heavy branch on his way out of the car and at this point was prepared to fight for his life. Especially as he knew that if this branch failed him that the almost 6 foot 270 pound alpha chimp would almost but certain rip into his average 7 foot 9 body like it was nothing. Fearless though, Gary yelled back to answer Bruno's screech and began running to meet the alpha's attack head on. As Bruno was running for it though, he lifted his chin in the air while screaming which gave Gary the perfect opportunity to strike. He immediately took the opportunity to take the forked end of his branch and rammed it into Bruno's throat which immediately because of Bruno's own counterforce gave Gary the opportunity and ability to lift Bruno into the air and slam him back down onto the ground. Gary then turned the branch back around and proceeded to hit Bruno's massive body over and over again. Then suddenly as quickly as it started it was over as the now embarrassed Bruno exploded back up and began trying to hobble back into the tree line all the while showing signs of submission towards Gary. Then witnessing this, the troop exploded with screaming and hollering at the defeat of their strongest male and alpha. Gary then ran over towards the gate and told Alan and Richie to run down the street and ask for help. And luckily also, Issa had already jumped the fence and was running down for help as well. Then after knowing help was on the way, Gary turned his attention to Melvin who was in a completely bad way as not only was most of his hand missing, but by now Bruno had also managed to eat and tear away most of his foot as well. Gary and Melvin then had a brief conversation about what to do next and both decided that the best decision would be to stay together and try to slowly join the others down the road the best they could. Then as they were getting ready to leave, the tree line was going insane as the chimps were jumping and hollering but not emerging. Then Gary looked over to see where Bruno had run off to, but Bruno was right where he left him just sulking by himself. Then feeling that this was going to be the only chance that they were going to get to escape, the two began for the end of the road. Luckily as they were walking, an army vehicle was already approaching and immediately loaded Melvin into the back and raced him to the nearest hospital a few miles away. Then a few minutes later as Gary was trying to find his other friends, another vehicle would pull up in front of him with a nightmarish sight in the back cargo bed. It was the grisly remains of a man who had his jaw torn from his face both hands and feet ripped off, his genitals completely obliterated, and along with that, he was completely disemboweled. Obviously taken back by the scene, Gary then asked who this was and what happened, but immediately would be taken back by the answer. It's his friend and cab driver Issa, for you see, earlier as Issa jumped the fence and started running away for help, the chimps followed and savagely mauled him before he could even get halfway down the road killing him in one of the most horrific ways possible. Luckily however, his other friends Alan and Richie were able to escape with their lives and little injuries. As for Bruno, being humiliated in front of his troop, he had no other choice but to slip away into the jungle and live amongst the wild chumps instead of with his tribe in the sanctuary. Though being almost 16 years since the incident, he could have already returned and reclaimed his alpha position amongst his tribe once again. And once again, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bell for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.